Good morning, grade 12s. Today we're going to look at the introduction to VAT, um, starting with how and why we would register for VAT. Can anybody remember when you have to register for VAT? Yes. When your turnover is greater than one million. Exactly. When your turnover is greater than a million rand, you have to register for VAT. You have no choice. If your turnover is smaller than a million rand, can you register for VAT if you want to? Maybe. Yes. Yes, you can. So you could choose to register for VAT. For example, if you were an exporter, you would then be able to claim back the VAT even though you don't charge VAT because your goods would be zero rated. Or perhaps you're a small business and you want people to take you seriously. And if they see that you are VAT registered, they would realize that you're not a fly by night company. So those might be reasons why you would actually do this. Okay. Your VAT period is usually going to be every two months, but there are sometimes different VAT periods. So if you register for VAT, automatically you would go on to a bi-monthly return. In other words, your return would be for January and February together, March and April together, etc. Okay. Um, however, you can also register for a different category. For example, if you're a very, very large business, you might need to actually submit your VAT every month instead of every two months because the quantities of money are so large that it's just pointless to hold on to it. Of course, SARS would rather have it nice and, and often. Um, farmers would only have to submit their VAT every six months. Any idea why farmers don't submit every two months? They are only going to sell their goods once they have grown and harvested them, yes. In other words, it's every season. They are seasonal. So as a result, that SAR says that's fine, we can wait and we'll do it every six months instead. If you are a trust, then you only need to do it once a year as well. Okay, but we're not going to worry too much about that. We will always assume that it's every two months. So, how do we calculate that? Do you remember doing your basic calculations for that last year yes. in grade 11? No? Oh dear. Let's quickly revise <laughs> So, um, you might remember that I showed you the calculation triangle, which is something that I just made up because it made sense one day. You can actually use this for any calculations where you've got a base number that you add or subtract a percentage to to get another number. It works very, very nicely for the VAT, but you can also use it for um, markup percentages, tax, all sorts of other things. So here is the little triangle. If you like pictures and you like to see things, you might like to draw it. We would use our exclusive price as the base, as 100%. Our VAT, which in our case is always going to be 14%, and you add those two together to get your inclusive price of 114%. If you don't really care about what it looks like, you don't have to draw a triangle. You certainly don't have to remember which point is which, because it really doesn't matter. The important thing is just that you've got the three numbers that are related to each other. Drawing it like this will help you to see it better. Then what you do need to remember is this formula. This is your golden formula that you need to use. So you might want to highlight that. All that you need to remember is the amount that I'm looking for my X amount, I will work out by taking my given amount because they will generally give you a rand value. If you think back to your baseline, it said, for example, there was an inclusive amount of 228 rand. What is the VAT? Well, the amount that I'm looking for is the VAT amount. They gave me the 228 rand. But now how do I work out the VAT from that? What you do is you put your percentages as a fraction. Always put X on top. If you think of maths, it's X is on the bottom. You want to have a heart attack, it's too scary. Put X on the top. So X, in our case, is the VAT, 14%. So you would put 14 on the top. And then you divide it by the percentage that the given amount relates to. So if you are told that that 228 Rand is on the inclusive amount, you will then take the 114 inclusive and show that at the bottom. So you'll say 228 times 14 over 114 and end up with 200 Rand as your exclusive price that you need. That's just a little recap of what you did last year.
year, but you are going to need to use it quite a lot this year as well. Could you go yes. um, exclusive over inclusive? Yes, if you were given that 228 inclusive and you wanted to work out the exclusive amount. So in that case, let me go back. In that case over here, you would be looking for the exclusive amount. Yes. You would use your 228 rand. You would then say, I'm looking for exclusive. Exclusive is 100. So I would say 100 divided by 114. And you would get your 200 rand exclusive price. Thank you. Right. So, again, just to recap, let's have a look and see what the effect is when we have that transactions. If we're looking at our particular business, on the one hand, you are going to record the exclusive figure. Remember that I've told you, your accounting records should only have the exclusive amount in. So, sales will be recorded at the exclusive price. Trading stock, stationery, advertising equipment, even your tangible assets will be shown at the exclusive price. Then to that, you would add your VAT. Your sales would relate to output VAT. And then all the things that you buy or spend money on, you would claim back the input VAT. Okay? So what would happen is the output VAT would get paid over to SARS, and SARS would pay you back the input VAT, but in reality, you just offset the two, and the difference would get paid to or by SARS. The contra account over here is your inclusive amount. So obviously the exclusive plus the VAT equals the inclusive. Generally, that's only going to be debtors, creditors, or bank, depending on whether you're buying or selling, and whether it was a cash transaction or a credit transaction. However, you can keep in mind that, for example, if the owner took stock out of the business, if you claim the VAT when you bought the stock, you've then got to charge VAT when he draws it out. So drawings would then be the inclusive figure. Okay. But the concepts are always exactly the same. This inclusive is the other transaction involved for the total amount owed. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. So... How do we record our VAT? Obviously, any transaction needs to go into the journals first before you post to the general ledger. In matric, it's very unlikely that you're going to get asked to complete journals, but you can't rule it out. Technically, it is still examinable. It's just we never really do it because it's actually too easy. But it does help to understand what it should look like. So, output VAT is obviously going to be where you've got bank or debtors, where you sold stuff to your bank or debtors for the inclusive amount. And then on the other side of it, you will have your sales exclusive plus your output VAT. Okay? What journal would you normally record this transaction in if you didn't have the VAT? Where would this go? What journals? CRJ, your cash receipts journal. Or if it was on credit with debtors, DJ, Dayton's Journal. Okay, so it would either be the Cash Receipts Journal or the Dayton's Journal. So we're still going to use those journals, but all we need to do is make two sales, we also need to have a back column that we put in there. So if you have a look at these journals, you've got your bank column, remember the bank will be inclusive, and normally bank equals everything else added up, I just sneak a back column in there. Because now my VAT plus my sales will equal bank. Okay. Remember the cost of sales does its own little thing, so we don't worry about it. But now have a look here. Notice that when I had a sale, I put it into bank VAT sales. And obviously cost of sales for cost of sales and trading stock. Why do you think, however, when I receive money from the debtor, I only put it in bank and debtors and I don't show it in VAT. Why am I not going to charge VAT when the debtor pays me? Think about it. Let's have a look at the debtor's journal where the debtor bought stuff. There, I'm going to debit my debtor and I will credit VAT and sales. Okay? 
So this over here is showing where the debtor owes money to me, and I've charged my VAT already. So now when he pays me, all that's happening is it's a payment that is taking place. I don't have to charge VAT again. There's no sales. Do you see that? There's no invoice here. And you've already charged it. I've already charged it in the debtor's journal. So that's why there's no VAT for the debtor's entry. Does that make sense? Let's have a look now for the input VAT. Your input VAT is obviously going to be for the other side where you are now buying things and you need to claim the VAT back. So over here it would be generally bank or creditors for the inclusive amount and that will equal your costs of stock and any other expenses, maybe other assets that you bought as well for the exclusive price as well as the input VAT. What journals would we use here? CPJ. Cash payments CJ. journal and CJ creditors journal. Good. So if we look at those two, we do exactly the same thing as what we did before. My bank and my creditors are going to be the inclusive amount. I will have a column for VAT, which is my input VAT that I will claim back. And then I have all my other columns for the things that I bought at the exclusive price. If I'm doing my cross-casting, my bank must equal VAT plus all those other things. Now I have a look. When I bought trading stock, I can claim that back. I bought stationery, I can claim that back. When I pay my creditor, I don't claim it back. Why not? Because you're only just paying for it. Because I'm only paying for it, I already claimed it back when I bought the trading stock and stationery here in the creditor's journal. Okay. Quick question to see if you're very clever. If I don't have that only here, for, for example, trading stock or stationery, if my VAT column is empty, what does that mean? Why might I not claim VAT back when I bought trading stock or stationery or something? Any idea? Maybe I couldn't claim the VAT back. Maybe the goods were zero rated. Or maybe they were exempt. Maybe my supply was just not that registered. Okay, so you were thinking along the right, like, right lines, but generally if something's imported, the importer's still going to have to add the VAT on. Okay, right. So let's have a look at example 7.2. You're going to highlight with pink to start with. Transaction <coughs> number one, your cash sales of 2,850 Rand including 350 Rand VAT. Notice it's been worked out for you here. Sometimes it won't be and you'll need to work it out yourself using your calculation triangle. The goods originally cost 1,250. Again, you might need to work out that cost price. That will go into your cash receipts journal as normal. Just like you learned in grade eight, you're going to have cash sales, but now notice. Your full amount of 2850 goes into bank, the inclusive. Your VAT of 350 goes into output sales. Your sales is 2500 and your cost of sales 1250 Yes. Working our cost of sales to be take our bank, um, oh no, we take the sales by excluding the VAT, right? Yes. Okay. If you've got to calculate this, absolutely. You're going to use your sales oh, figure, right. the exclusive <coughs> amount. Okay, right. Number two, we can do in orange. Cash receipts for repairs done for customers total 798 Rand, including VAT of 98 Rand. Again, we've been given the figures. You're going to show 798 in VAT, 98 in output VAT, and then you just work out the difference as 700 Rand for repairs in Number three, received 1,700 Rand from Z Midland as part payment of his account. Notice here, we're going to show the 1,700 Rand in bank and in debtors. There's no VAT because he would have already been charged the VAT when he bought the goods. We can then have a look at number four. Invoice issued to AKZ included sales of 5,000 Rand 
plus that of 700 Rand, cost price 2,500. In this case, you've been given the exclusive price and the VAT, and you just add them together to work out the inclusive. So in your debtors journal, your inclusive will be the combined amount of 5,700, output VAT 700, sales 5,000, and of course don't forget to enter your cost of sales 2,500. Again here, you would use it based on the sales figure. Can you see what the markup was for this business at this point? 100% markup, yeah. Because you can see it's half of your sales. So you took cost of sales, you added 100% of the cost of sales again to get the 5,000. Let's have a look now at the stuff that we bought. Number five, bought stationery from Sahel Stationery and paid 570 Rand cash. The till slips show that of 70 Rand. So in this case, we're going to put 570 in bank, that is the inclusive amount that we physically paid. But of that, 70 Rand, we will be able to claim back from SARS. So therefore, our stationary expenses will be 500 Rand. Um, now, just a question. Yes. Going back to um, sales tax, yes. and how do you, uh, we receive 170 from him. Uh -huh. Now, because that was already charged, he doesn't. Does that mean that in that one seven there is the VAT amount? Yes. But we're just not showing it on the yeah. okay. So this would actually be the inclusive, the amount, inclusive amount that he owes you. We're just not showing that to VAT. Okay. Because we already recorded the VAT previously, this is the amount of payment. payment. Exactly. Okay. Right. Number six, pay 3,000 Rand to Jackson suppliers on a trout. Again, just like the Z Midland over here, the Jackson suppliers, the 3,000 Rand in bank and creditors was in fact the inclusive amount. The VAT is already inside there. But for this transaction, we don't even need to worry about the VAT because all that's happening is we are paying off a liability. We are paying an amount that we owe. Number seven. Paid Telcom 456 for the telephone account, including 56 Rand VAT. So we're going to put the inclusive 456 in bank, 56 in input VAT, and 400 Rand for telephone in sundry accounts. And then lastly in our creditors journal, number eight, invoice received from Keatsman Traders for goods bought on credit. Shows a total amount owed of 3420, including 420 Rand VAT. Remember that the invoice amount is the total inclusive amount. That is the amount that you owe to the creditor. So you will show it in the creditor's column. You will then show VAT of 420 Rand that you can claim back, and 3000 Rand in trading stock. If we then pay Keatsman Traders the full amount in our cash payments journal, we would show the 3420 in bank and in creditors, and you can then see why we don't have the VAT. Any questions? Okay, you now need to please go and do exercise 7.3.